Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so, guys, we have quite a bit to talk about in this video. The tropics in the Atlantic Basin is coming to life, and over in the Eastern Pacific, we have quite a lot of activity taking place. Two active tropical cyclones and two disturbances, one with a high chance to develop. And so, we'll be talking about all of that in detail in this video. And so, before I go into details, <laughs> Alright, so let us kick start things with the Eastern Pacific. So as we're seeing here from the National Hurricane Center's 5-day outlook, we're seeing here that we have Tropical Storm Hilda, Tropical Depression Ignacio, as well as a disturbance highlighted in red which is associated with the remnants of Depression 9. And then we have that newly highlighted area where we could have some development taking place so that area highlighted in yellow is given a 30 percent chance for development to occur within the next five days and so the area that is highlighted in red is given a high 80 percent chance so maybe it is possible that that by tonight or tomorrow or so we could have a, a tropical depression forming in that region guys and so now let's take a look at hilda and ignacio so here is hilda hilda is definitely losing strength it peaked as a category one with winds of 85 miles per hour and it maintained that intensity for quite a while and now we have it being degraded back to a tropical storm so let's look at the national hurricane center's cone forecast for hilda and so we're seeing here that the system has sustained winds of seven 20 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the northwest at 8 miles per hour so it's not moving very quickly and that general motion is expected during the next couple of days throughout most of this week and it is going to be gradually losing intensity and it's eventually going to become a depression maybe by sometime late thursday going into the end of this week and it will most likely dissipate by the end of this week or early next week so now let us move on to ignacio and so here we have a tropical depression ignacio and it is really not looking so good the system is likely to dissipate by wednesday the latest so at this time it has winds of 35 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the north northwest at six miles per hour so it's, it's really going to be lingering out there for a bit before it dissipates uh, tomorrow or so and so now let us go on to the atlantic basin and so here we have the general satellite view of it and so we see quite a bit of activity taking place uh, along the gulf coast as well as the east coast and in sections of the caribbean and just off africa and that is where we have uh, uh, two areas that are highlighted as areas for potential development to occur so let's take a look at the five-day outlook and so there we have it so we have that one that is just south of the Cabo Verde Islands where you see that X that is our invest 91 L and then below that that is not yet designated as an invest the wave is expected to emerge off Africa and development is possible in that region and I would say from now if you're in the Caribbean or potentially the Bahamas or East Coast you definitely want to pay attention to this this, but it is not much concern right now but if there are going to be favorable conditions persisting then it is definitely possible that we will have some development taking place remember guys we're heading towards the peak of the hurricane season and so we are expecting an increase in tropical activity so now let's take a look at our systems individually so first up invest 91 l and so as you're seeing it is given a low 10 percent chance to develop and actually development does not seem likely of the system but it's is expected to increase the rainfall across the Cabo Verde Islands uh, as we go throughout most of the day tomorrow and as it is going to be accelerating a bit to the north northwest and if you're there you might experience some showers and thunderstorms and um, maybe a bit of gusty winds as well but nothing significant no major impacts are anticipated from 91 l and so let's go on to our new disturbance so this is given a 20 percent chance of development through the next five days and note that it is a newly identified disturbance so of course the chance is not going to be high immediately but once you're going to be having favorable conditions persistent that is is when we're going to see a gradual increase in the chance for it and once that low pressure area emerges off africa into that region you will see that x to show its location and so now let us take a look at select view of 91 l close up so there we have it not seen any sorts of organization but we do have some small spots of deep convection and that is what's going to be spreading across this archipelago and inducing inclement weather conditions there and so now let us take a look at what our models are expecting in in terms of our 
system and so let us first go to the GFS model and so in case you're not clear this is a map showing the isobars which are lines of equal pressure and the closer you see them in a circular manner with a pressure below 1030 millibars that is a low pressure system and can be our tropical cyclones so that is what we're looking for and so now let us go on to Friday the 6th of August so by Friday here we have something quite interesting uh, we do see a 1008 millibar low pressure system to the south southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands and this is for the new disturbance not 91L so let's go further out Sunday the 8th we see that the pressure has uh, risen which means that the system is getting weaker so when you're having a rise in pressure when it comes on to a tropical cyclones they're usually getting weaker but the lower the pressure the stronger the winds so let's go further to August 11th so the following Wednesday we see that the system uh, the pressure has risen a bit and it's seemingly losing organization or losing strength and as we head further out we don't see much become of it but again guys this does not have to be the scenario it is still quite far out and a lot can change between then and what we're seeing now and changes are inevitable when it comes on to the weather so that is why we have to pay keen attention to this especially because of its general northwestward or west to west northwestward movement that is anticipated of the system here so there is the potential for some land area to be impacted by it and so let's go on to euro and so this is wednesday the 4th of august so this is tomorrow and it is not showing much uh, being there out in the Atlantic but as we head to Friday we see that uh, most likely we have that wave emerging off Africa right there and then we have what is probably 91L making its way a bit westward uh, but the model doesn't go further out as of right now but as time goes by we will see more predictions and see if they are consistent and remember that earlier uh, the GFS model was anticipating something significant a major hurricane uh, approaching maybe the east coast maybe it doesn't make it there we don't know but that is what the model was showing but now it is not showing that so as i said changes are inevitable so we have to wait and see and pay keen attention to our system so now let's look at the favorability across the basin so first up the ocean temperature map the gulf is very very favorable at this time ocean temperatures are great to support any tropical cyclones that are trying to develop uh, the caribbean is definitely there as well some parts of the main development region not very favorable right now but as you move more westward toward the caribbean and the east coast conditions are a lot more favorable and so now let's look at the wind shear map so the different colors here mean different shear intensities so when you see those greens that mean that the shear is quite favorable uh, the yellows mean that it is neutral and the reds mean unfavorable so whenever you see a lot of those reds it means that the environment is not so accommodative of our tropical cyclones that are trying to develop we're seeing that the Gulf of Mexico is quite favorable as well in terms of the wind shear. The Caribbean is not very uh favorable but as we head over in intersections of the main development region we see that things are quite okay and so now let's finally take a look at our big inhibiting factor when it comes on to tropical development the saharan dust so whenever you see those oranges going to that red and pink shade that is when you have a lot of dust it's very dense in those regions there so the systems once they're going to be staying a bit low latitude or out of that range of very dense saharan dust they will have a chance of developing but as you can see this trend stretching across most of the main development region and is not really favorable as of right now but of course as time goes by things are expected to be more conducive and so guys that is really it for this update video so again we have four systems over in the eastern pacific fortunately as of right now none are imminent threats to land and then we have our two disturbances over in the atlantic that we have to pay attention to and the cabo verde islands will be feeling slight impacts from invest 91l which is going to be making its we're across the region and so guys if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weatherwise